Whenever Apple brings out a brand new product, you can be guaranteed it will sell millions. But their origins are far more humble than that. The first Apple computers were actually built in Steve Jobs' parents' garage. And Steve Wozniak actually hand-built each one of them. Today at Christie's, one of these original computers is going on sale. You're looking at the first personal home computer. It doesn't look like much, but this is really where the home computing revolution started. It was uh, the first pre-assembled motherboard that in principle worked straight out of the box. Uh, it didn't have a screen, it didn't have a monitor, it didn't have a keyboard, uh, didn't even have a power supply. Uh, but what you're seeing is the first really user-friendly home personal computer. It was the first computer that used a keyboard and a monitor. Um, before this, you would have had to have bought a computer with a flashing panel of lights to tell you what was in memory. This was revolutionary. You could type on the keyboard and see what the output was on the screen. Nowadays, everybody uses a computer with a screen and a keyboard. About 200 were manufactured. No one really knows how many have survived. I would guess about a quarter of that, something like 50. The thing that makes this piece um, really unique is the fact that it's in the original shipping box. It's got the original invoice, a letter from Steve Jobs, all the original manuals, and it's in very near original condition. And a small announcement here. Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple, would be delighted to autograph Apple I for the successful bidder at the end of the sale. So Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple, would be delighted to autograph Apple I for the successful bidder at the end of the sale. And here we go now, lot 65, Apple I personal computer, the first Apple computer, and the first ever personal computer with a ready-made motherboard. So lot 65, at 60,000 pounds, 60,000, 65,000, 70,000, 75,000, 80,000, 85,000, 90,000, 95,000, 100,000 pounds. 100,000 pounds I bid. 100,000. Anyone else now is with me at 100,000? 100,010 with Steph at 110,000 pounds. I'm out here. It's with you, Steph, at 110,000. Any other bidders now? 110,000 pounds I bid. Are we all done? Selling. For 110,000 pounds. Thank you, Paddle 820. See, you know, an organization like this that you often read about selling the finest, most expensive artwork, furniture, you know, and um, manuscripts, that sort of thing, to see them actually now becoming a powerhouse in selling actual computer equipment. And I just, today, I mean, my heart went out as I got to see things like the Turing documents, the Enigma machine, and then. Uh, the Apple One sold, and it really was an important, important step. I look back at that machine, I didn't really feel that way even when I designed it. But I take a look at it and say, oh my gosh, the whole formula was actually exposed and put out there for the world. So I'm very delighted for the gentleman, it was this gentleman's brother who uh, purchased it today. And, uh, you know, it, it, the amazing thing was, there was a point in time when the com Computer formula, we were starting to get a sense that they were going to be affordable someday. People could afford their own computers. And here I went down to just basically show off my design talents at a computer club and laid out a little board with a bunch of little chips that didn't add up to, you know, more than about $50, $70 by somebody looking at it. And I'm able to type in programming languages and solve problems. And people were kind of amazed. They didn't realize the formula that could get the cost down to that level. So uh, the Apple One really um, is a trendsetter. There are very few of them that were ever made. It's a complete package, and I'm very uh, glad for your brother to now have it. <laughs> when things grow at an exponential rate driven by Moore's Law, you never really see that far ahead. You just sort of think things are going linearly. And I knew it was a great step at the time. I knew that it was making po it was possible a part of this revolution that people could have, every single person could have a computer in their home someday. We believed in that, but we didn't really know, knew what it meant. We didn't think you'd ever have a song on a computer. Um, you know, even though if you used your brain, you'd have to predict, yeah, my gosh, you're going to have a movie on a little card someday in your hand. It was very hard to see at the start. Um, remember, the Apple One, I gave it away for free. No copyrights, no nothing. Just gave it away to people so they could build their own. 
It was really just an attempt to help others move the world forward in all the social benefits of communication, of education, of um, a lot of productivity, and uh, don't forget, software is more than just a computer that led to what we have today. A lot of people have different ideas on the software that weren't in the big companies like Apple. We built platforms, we built the base, but a lot of people wrote the programs that really made it useful. And one thing about a computer is, there's not one thing it does, there's millions. Chris Sangani, Engineering and Technology Magazine. Uh, what do you think is going to be the next big thing in terms of uh, computer interfaces? Uh, um, believe it or not, I actually have computer interfaces. I never like to be a futurist because I'm kind of an engineer with my feet on the floor. And I think, what can you build with hardware? What could I know you can write with software? But I really think that voice recognition has taken some incredible steps to become a useful part of our mobile computer life. Speaking little commands into the phone without having to think, what are the steps I take to do it? is so much more pleasant to me. Um, it's kind of like you feel fun when you're moving your hand around swiping, whether it's writing words or dragging objects on an iPad. And it's like your body just knows. It tells you when you're doing things that feel so good to you, eventually the rest of the world is going to feel the same way. And I think voice recognition, I just don't have to think that much to speak a sentence into the computer telling it I want to navigate somewhere or I want to phone somebody or what is the answer to a message.